Hello and welcome to season one uh, of WJC Biology for the GCSE starting in 2016. I'm going to be covering unit one in a series of videos um, with a view to obviously looking at unit two, possibly unit three for those people doing separate science or triple science. As you can see, unit one consists of six topics. And I, I, I really like the way they've set this out. I think it's really logical, the order that they've, that they've done these in. And I think it's going to work out really nicely. So I'm considering these for season one to be six episodes. Um, looking at the subtopics, looking at the statements from the specification, I'm going to have to separate these episodes, I believe, into for episode one at least. We'll call this 1A because I, I can see this being sort of three videos to cover everything that we need to cover. So we'll be looking at today the structure of animal and plant cells, how we use a light microscope and how to prepare slides for their use. How the basic structure or the general structure of an animal and plant cell can change, can be differentiated for their specific job or function. So specialized cells and then how looking at the levels of organization, just looking at uh, one example there with the circulatory system to help us through. So we're going to go straight into this, looking at the structure of the animal cell. Now, straight away, I'm going to say at the start, I've created the pictures that we're going to be looking at using an app called either Paper 53 or Procreate. And I've gone a little bit crazy with the colors. So please don't, you know, finish watching this video or listening to me thinking that uh, the colors that you're going to see are the actual colors that you see. It's just me being a bit... Uh, playing about with the apps on the iPad really. So structure of the animal cell, um, some just basic things and I, I'm sure you probably would have done these perhaps in year seven even you'd have labeled uh, the cell membrane, the nucleus and the cytoplasm and all we're going to add in here is uh, this strange looking organelle which is called a mitochondria and that's all you need. I've included these little dots which are ribosomes um, which the specification doesn't suggest that you need to know, but I just think it's it's nice for you to know that these ribosomes, because this is where proteins are made, and we do later on talk about protein structure, particularly for higher tier, um, when we're looking at enzymes. So in terms of labeling this, on the outside there, we've got the, the cell membrane, and the job of the cell membrane, it controls what goes into and out of the cells. We say it's selectively permeable, now what that means, quite basically, is that it lets some things in, but not others. And the things that it lets in are very small molecules or substances, and it does not let in the bigger substances or molecules. Um, there are ways for those to get in, but we're not covering that here. Okay, we've got the nucleus, which for some reason I coloured in orange. As I said, it is not orange, but that's just me. Um, so the nucleus, it, it controls cells' activities, particularly through um, um, coding for, for proteins. Um, do not say it's the brain of the cell. Examiners really hate it when people say that, and they will not give you the mark if you say that. You must say it controls cells' activities. Here we have the cytoplasm. And it's described as a jelly-like substance. And this is where the majority of chemical reactions for the cell take place. Um, the majority, barring, however, the later stages of aerobic respiration, which take place inside the mitochondria. Check my spelling. Mitochond... Whoops. Three R. So one mitochondrion and two mitochondria. So if you're ever wondering about why you see those two different spellings, and as I said, those little things, I've just drawn them as dots for now. These are ribosomes. So you're going to need to be able to draw either a given diagram. I think the days are gone where they'll ask you to draw a diagram yourself in the exam, but I guess you never know. Um, and do bear in mind, whatever textbook you look in, whatever revision guide eventually you look in, or whatever teacher you have who's going to show you this, each diagram's unlikely to be the same as the one you get in the exam. So do be prepared to be able to recognize the cell membrane on the outside, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, and mitochondria 
in, a, in an animal cell that doesn't necessarily look like this. I mean, it certainly won't look like this because I just went crazy, as I said, on the, uh, the iPad app that I was uh, playing with at the time. Now, the plant cell, oops, is a little bit more complicated. There's more going on. Okay, but you can recognize the same thing. So let's let's straight away. So there's our nucleus. Again, I've gone crazy with the colors, by the way. Uh, there's our cytoplasm. The jelly like substance where chemical reactions take place. And that is supposed to be a mitochondria. I never said I was an art teacher, by the way. So we can recognize uh, those bits and pieces. What I haven't labeled is the cell membrane. And it is very, very easy to get. I just finished writing that. You see that arrow is pointing right on the inside there. That is the cell membrane. This bit around the outside, that is the cell wall. Okay, so the cell wall made of cellulose provides strength for the cell, helps to maintain um, a nice strong shape there. In the middle, we have a vacuole. Now, the vacuole contains cell sap. That's a store of water and minerals. And if, if the plant cell, indeed the plant, has lots and lots of water, then the vacuole is swollen, and that pushes the cell contents up against the cell wall, and that helps it keep really, really strong and turgid. If the plant cell is deprived of water, if the plant is deprived of water, then the vacuole is what shrinks. And as this shrinks, the cell membrane can actually pull away from the inside of the cell wall. And they've got a posh word for that. It's plasmolysis. And finally, we have down here the chloroplast. And there's lots of these dotted around. They're only found in plant cells above ground. That's because they need light because chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. And I really haven't done these justice by the way, just drawing them like this. They're very complicated little organelles. Um, and you would learn about those in great detail if you did A-level biology. And it is very, very interesting stuff. But for now, you need to be able to label all the parts that you can see there common questions they love to ask what features are common to both animal and plant cells so they both have a nucleus a cytoplasm a cell membrane and they both have mitochondria and it is the vacuole the chloroplasts and the cell wall that are unique to plant cells that's quite a common question they come up with the way I try and sort of make a comparison of this, a side-by-side -side comparison, is either to draw those cells side-by-side -side yourself, and that's something I'd certainly recommend you have a little go at, or to put it into some sort of table like this. So you're gonna list the structures down the left-hand column, and in the next column, you're gonna put what is the job or function of that part. And what I've done is just put a ticker across in place to say whether they have that feature or not. So you can see there, the nucleus contains DNA, which controls cells' activities. Animal and plant both have these. They both have the cell membrane, which controls the passage of substances into and out of the cells. They both have the cytoplasm, where most chemical reactions take place. And they both have structures called mitochondria, which carry out aerobic respiration. Now, unique to the plant cells are the cell wall, the vacuole, and the chloroplast. So the cell wall gives the cell shape, provides strength. It's only found in the plant, not found in the animal. The vacuole contains a watery solution called sap. Uh, when it's full, it pushes out the cell contents. Um, as it empties, as I mentioned, it pulls away from the cell wall, um, causing plasmolysis. And the chloroplasts, only in plant cells above ground, they contain chlorophyll to absorb light energy for photosynthesis. 